Alright, hi everyone. Um, it's about quarter past two in the morning, and I've just gone to see The Rise of Skywalker tonight. Um, and I really feel like I just wanted to post my spoiler heavy review on here. So, just some warnings there are some spoilers ahead. Um, I'm a massive Star Wars fan, so obviously I was, I've been looking forward to this like, moment for a long time. Um, it, it's actually, <laughs> this is actually my final night actually in Kona, so I'm just going to stay up and do this. I had a lot of fun tonight actually watching Rise of Skywalker, and I wanted to say thanks to Jordan and Kendra for like having me. It's quite random, I just ran to lunch, <laughs> at lunchtime I just ran to Jordan, and he, he, he asked me if I wanted to come tonight to this thing, and he came to go to me, so thank you very much, Amy. Um, actually, going to this movie, I actually had surprisingly low expectations. Um, I sort of did check out the first reactions online, and um, The Rise of Skywalker unfortunately had some pretty mixed to, you know, pretty mixed to okay sorts of reactions. Um, and I was a little bit worried going in that the highlight of the night would actually be the trailer for Christopher Nolan's next movie, Tenet, um, being screened um, during the trailers. And I was, I was like, would that be the highlight of my night? But actually, um, that turned out not to be the case. Um, I actually ended up really liking The Rise of Skywalker, and I was really unknown. I just had a, uh, had a really fun time watching it. Just really appreciated where the movie was coming from. Although, um, I suppose overall, there are a lot of sort of plot holes and things. And if you really like The Last Jedi, then chances are <laughs> you, you won't like what, what, what The Rise of Skywalker actually does to The Last Jedi. It sort of guts everything sort of behind that. And I was sort of actually commenting on the way out. Um, of the theatre, and this is spoiler heavy once again, so like, it so doesn't mean the Force doesn't end up being in balance, because um, at the end of this movie, spoiler alert, the Jedi actually win, um, and um, Rey ends up continuing Princess Leia's like, uh, legacy, um, and this, this is really, I was just like, wow, everything, even about the original prophecy from the original trilogy about Anakin bringing balance to the Force, um, and certainly the Force being in balance was a huge theme um, in The Last Jedi. That sort of gets chucked out the window pretty quickly. Um, if, you th if you think about sort of like the, the, scene, the, the scene where the, where the Skellig Michael, which well, I, I, don't, I can't remember the name of the planet, but the movie Skellig Michael in your life, but like the life, the death, everything being in balance. Everything being balanced, that sort of like gets chucked out um, with, with The Rise of Skywalker. Um, the good news is the Jedi, the Jedi win. But what, what actually made, like, I know some people don't like The Last Jedi. Um, I personally quite liked it. I think it had its own beauty. And I think you really have to appreciate the perspective Ryan Johnson was trying to bring. Um, but in, in, in a lot of ways, what actually happened, um, it was beautiful, but it's also slightly depressing, I found. The Last Jedi, it really was, the movie was about Rey being alone. Um, she, she was no one's daughter. Um, there, there's a scene, um, once again, off the island, where she's in that cave and she's looking at all the reflections of Rey and she can finally see who she belongs to sort of beyond, um, I think, the ice. And then she breaks it and finds out it's actually just her and it's just been her the entire time. And I suppose what Ryan Johnson was trying to get with that um, was the fact that the Force isn't actually tied to a bloodline, that the Force can choose whoever the Force chooses. And not, not only that, the Force chose Rey simply for the purpose of bringing balance to the darkness that was also rising from Kylo Ren and Snoke, etc. And so there was sort of this depressing thing where there always was this struggle between life and death and with no victor. i probably show him through the sort of the inconclusive sort of, the inconclusive sort of death that Luke's got also sort of has at the end where he doesn't really end up fighting. Oh, oh boy, and Luke. And of course you might think that Luke can't fight because he's just a force ghost if you watch The Last Jedi, but clearly if you watch The Rise of Skywalker, um, you know, Luke could have fought, but he chose not to. No, that was sort of like, the victory in The Last Jedi was Luke not fighting, whereas, of course, there's a huge amount of fighting, and ultimately the victory is in um, the Jedi fighting and defeating the Sith. Um, what really turns out to be in this is really the clash of the Thousand Generations of Sith versus uh, the Thousand Generations of Sith and Palpatine versus the Thousand Generations of Sith living in Rey. Um, so, you know, The Last Jedi, the Force could have seemed to be quite impersonal, um, whereas, Clearly the force is like a force for good, if that makes sense. Um, and actually, some Kendra I think was commenting to me like, oh, the force is like the Holy Spirit, because you see the force sort of bring them together, sort of healing the sick, um, raising the dead, etc., which just sort of brought, brings back memories. Um, and like, there's actually, there's actually so many things I have to say about this movie. Um, 
So in this movie, spoiler alert, if I haven't said that already, so Ray ends up being identified as Palpatine's granddaughter, um, but she actually overcomes being her granddaughter by proving that some things are thicker than water, which is actually quite a quote from the movie as well. Oh, sorry, some things are thicker than blood. Um, and so Ray actually ends up overcoming that through her actions. And um, I, I liked, I enjoyed the fact, I actually really enjoyed the scene where this early on this monster comes to attack them uh, and I was like, oh my goodness, it's like the Raktars again from Force Awakens and like the whole fight this pointless battle. But Rey uh, realises that this monster, rather than being um, a threat, is actually just injured quite severely and needs healing. And so using the Force, she ends up healing this monster, um, which actually turns out to be sort of the theme <laughs> for the movie, um, sort of love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you sort of thing, where actually nearly all the, may maybe apart from Emperor Palpatine, but nearly all the, all the bad guys sort of, oh, I, supp I suppose at least Kylo Ren was simply trying to overcome his own monsters that he'd sort of fought. Um, and so, apart from the physical healing, so there's actually <laughs> there's a lot of physical healing that the Force, that the force uses in this. Um, so um, Ray heals that monster, Ray heals Ben Solo after their fight, and then Ben gives up his own life to raise Ray back up to life after the Emperor, sort of like, um, after she dies, finding the Emperor, basically. And so... I thought that was, a, <laughs> that was a beautiful moment. There's also a lot of inner healing in this movie. Like, seriously, um, and I, sorry if you're not used to the Christian lingo, but sort of inner healing is this sort of phrase we use um, for people getting over the sort of emotional sort of heart issues as well, uh, which is actually a real YWAM thing. But, like, um, I, just, I did have flashbacks to lots of different inner healing things. I'm, I'm wondering if J.J. Abrams has actually done a slow so <laughs> at some point in the past or something. But, like, there's a droid with a nose cone who they find who actually pulls back from being touched, I think, by Poe Dameron. And Poe Dameron says, that droid has been, probably been treated badly in the past or something. And that actually brought me back to the Father Heart of God book with, by Floyd McClung. And Floyd actually tells a story um, that you can tell if a dog has been badly treated by its master when you raise your hands if it actually pulls back. And sort of like, seriously, when that droid pulled back, I was like, wow, that's, that could literally be from that book. Um, there's a reconciliation. So in, in, in her death, Leia manages to reach out to Ben as she, joins, as she becomes one of the Force. And Ben ends up, like, so if, if the scene is Ben and Ray are fighting, and I, uh, sorry, I should say Kylo Ren and Ray are fighting, and Kylo Ren's about to swing in for the final kill over Ray when, when this voice from Leia sort of reaches out, and then, and then that causes Kylo Ren to sort of drop his lightsaber, and then Ray nearly kills him, but then heals his wound from her lightsaber strike, and then after that sort of Ben gets, not, not only does Leia reconcile to Ben, Ben gets reconciliation with his dad through his memories, which is sort of a very so-so thing. And I was like, is this like presenting Jesus? Like, seriously? <laughs> um, but sort of Ben has this conversation with Han Solo. Um, by the way, I love the fact Harrison Ford appeared in this. I was like, blown away. <laughs> I was blown away by that. I was like, that was one of the highlights, definitely. Um, and I was like, but yeah, that reconciliation conversation with, with Han, seriously, it was the one time in the movie I actually cried. I was like, that, was that. that actually really touched me. Um, and Luke also coming to terms with his fear. I think we saw that from the trailer, but sort of like it was fear that kept Luke on that island, isolated and alone. Um, and so that sort of isolation from fear <laughs> sort of also falls under that sort of inner healing sort of thing. Um, the other sort of theme is like, you're not alone. The like quotes from the movie, like um, they win by making you think you're alone. Um, and that... Um, uh, that if you stand up and fight, you'll be joined. Um, and that when people stand up and fight for good, others will join them. Those are sorts of the themes. And it's sort of seen at the end um, when this massive fleet sort of comes in and, and helps out Poe Dameron's sort of crazy plan to take out the navigation system for the Star Destroyers. Um, I hope to go and explain what that, that's all about. That was pretty crazy. Um, the, the, sort of the motifs in the movie as well um, sort of just make it just sort of stand out a lot more. Um, I think with The Force Awakens, was eyes, like when Maz Kanata says, like, I can see it in your eyes. Um, there's a lot of shots of hands in this movie. So Ray's hands, Ben's hands, the Emperor's hands, etc. And a lot of things happen through hands, and that's sort, of, that's sort of suggesting that it's what you do that's really important, and it's not what's, what your bloodline is. Um, and so there's also a lot, a lot of, like, Luke undoing, like, what happened in The Last Jedi. So he's clearly overcome whatever fears he's had, and he asks Rey to treat a lightsaber with respect. Um, I laughed when that happened, because I was like, that's such an ironic comment, given <laughs> Luke's reaction to Rey at the beginning of The Last Jedi. Um, 
<laughs> um, the movie, like the movie itself, is like almost non-stop action. I compare it to like the Infinity War movie. It's like almost non-stop action. There's a lot of fighting. There's not a lot of breathing time for the characters. Um, that probably affects the movie negatively in some ways. It means that a lot of characters do seem shallow and don't really grow. And it's, it's a lot of the surface. Uh, you know, a lot of the changes aren't really properly explained. There's a character called Zil- Zero, Zero, I think, uh, who's like. Pose like X, I think, and she starts out absolutely hating him, and then suddenly turns this good person who like fights alongside like the resistance with no apparent real good reason. Um, General Hux also betraying the First Order for no reason also seemed really arbitrary. Although I found that moment, had they redeemed Hux, had they found a way to redeem Hux, that would have been powerful. But it turns out he was just doing it to make sure Kylo didn't win. Um, so it sounded like they were trying to figure out a way to get rid of him, but they couldn't really find a way, so they'll just have him betray Kylo for no reason at all. Um, having said that, I liked I loved Donald Gleason, and like I really wish they could have sent Hux out, like like on the good guy side. That would have been good, but that may, maybe that would have been too much work to do. Um, there's like a lot of holes in this movie in terms of storytelling. Um, so as much as I enjoyed it, I puzzled over lots of things during the movie. Like, seriously, Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter? Like, say what? How? Like, that's not possible, surely. Um, and it sort of makes you wonder, who, who are Ray's actual parents? Um, <laughs> at one point I was thinking, are they trying to say Owen Lars and Aunt Vru are Ray's parents? Like, that's pretty crazy, because that's actually not... <laughs> that actually makes no sense at all, because I thought Shmi Skywalker married after... <laughs> after she had Anakin. <laughs> um, and, like... Um, but, it, but on the other hand, if it really is Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, and they really are siblings to, to Anakin, then maybe Palpatine was involved. And, like, it still doesn't make sense. In fact, not only does that part of Palpatine's direct children not, like, Palpatine's granddaughter not make sense, the Empress, the Empress of Bible actually makes absolutely no sense to me as well. Like, seriously, cloning? I think that's what they said. But that's like an old expanded universe idea, which I actually didn't really like in the first place, and I certainly didn't really like it in the context of a mainstream Star Wars movie. Um, it's sort of like, yeah, I, I don't like. I, I just, I, I just, yeah, I just didn't like that. Um, like, there, there had to be a better way of sort of explaining that rather than just that. But the movie, unfortunately, was so packed, it probably didn't have time to unpack the idea of how the Emperor survived. Um, but they could have really done a lot better with that. Um, the other random bits we sort of like oh the force can do that like when uh, I think when Luke catches Ray's like so let me go back I'm just, I'm just trying to remember but the parts I'm sure um, where oh yes so when they're reaching between the force so when Ray and, and and Kylo Ren have this force connection and they're able to fight across the force I was like wow that blew my mind a little bit um, it, was, it was sort of like